see the light. to be in this house I'm thankful for a new day I'm thankful for of course our new addition to our family I was thinking um, and just praying this morning and just thanking God uh, for for who he is for all that he has done for him just watching over our family and and bringing uh, Amalia to us she came with so much favor and so much blessing and I'm just in awe and I thought, God, what, what, how, can I, how can I thank you enough? How can I say the right words? What, what, what can I even say to thank you enough, God, for all that you have done and for what you have given us? Let my life sing worship unto you and sing gratitude. Let my every day be gratitude. Show my thankfulness uh, unto you, God. Just let me do that. So when I say all of this is for his glory, my life, 
my children, my husband, my community, right? Everything that we do, let it be unto him. Let it be for his glory. We don't do it for man. We don't do it for, for attention. We don't do it because it's our duty. But we do it because we love God. We do it because we want to give him glory. We want our life to give him glory. We want our life to be a fragrance, what we do, right? We're not perfect people. We don't say the right things. We don't always do the right things. But God, give me the grace and give me the words to sing and to pray and to just tell you how much I love you and how much I'm so thankful. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. continue to worship him with the next song. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Yeah, my name is uh, Isaac, and I'm glad this morning to be here and uh, glad to be in this fellowship. I'm sure we are all of us uh, uh, re-energized after the Passover holidays. So we feel excited uh, that we have learned a lot uh, this morning. I have uh, two tasks to accomplish here. Uh, one is to dismiss our kids, ages uh, three to eight. But before that, allow me to read a portion of scripture um, from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter six, verses five to to eight or nine. The Bible says, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all with all your soul, and with all your strength." These commandments that I give you today are to be on uh, to be uh, to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames, uh, on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so let's pray our heavenly father this morning we are so grateful that you have gathered us in this place we thank you for this fellowship we thank you for the precious gift of life and we thank you for salvation oh lord we thank you that you gave your life for us so that lord we may be saved oh god from our sinful nature and that lord we may find the fullness of your glory we thank you for our children this morning as they go to their classes we pray that god they will be able to learn we pray that god they will be able to have understanding of everything they are going to be taught and we pray that you guide their teachers and give them wisdom not to teach our children in the way that lord you so desire as we prepare them for future oh god so that your kingdom oh lord will continue growing we bless your name and we honor you. We thank you for this in the name of Yeshua. We pray trusting and believing. Amen. So we want to dismiss our children ages uh, all. Oh, great. All. So they know where to go. For those that are new, we are going downstairs. So as they, as, they, as they live quietly, <laughs> God bless them. Yeah? God bless the teachers. Yeah, God bless the teachers. Thank you for that grace. Yes, yes, yes. So we, we, are, we also have this other opportunity to worship God with our substances, our offerings, our gifts. We have two uh, points of giving. We have one at the uh, next to the entrance and another one uh, uh, back there. You can give during the service or after the service. And we also have an online platform. You can also give through that online platform, which will be shown later during the announcement time. So we welcome you. So let's pray for 
our giving. Father, we thank you for your blessings once more. We are so grateful that you have uh, gifted us, Lord, with so much. You have gifted us with life, and you have gifted us with even uh, things, God, that we, uh, we can see and can touch, oh God. We thank you for your love. Father, we just want to worship you with the substances that, Lord, you have given us as we give back to you. Lord, we know that we may not give it um, uh, uh, so much, O oh God, but Lord, the little that we bring to you, O oh God, we pray that you will accept that offering, O oh God. We pray that, God, it may be acceptable before you, and we pray that, Lord, you may continue expanding our territories and giving us much more so that, Lord, we can give to the furtherance of your kingdom. We bless you, O oh God, for everything that we do, O oh God. May you be honored and may you be established in our lives. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Thank you.
der Wahl. In der Wahl, schätze Jotte, Mimcha. Aber die Haare ist schon nah. Stop worshiping, Lord. I never 
mercy. No I won't be able to stop worshiping you. I won't be able to stop singing unto you, Lord, when I see your face, when I see your glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We love your presence. We love your presence.
whatever you want to to do whatever you want to I will make room for you to do whatever you want to whatever do whatever you want to I will make
surrender all. We make room for you, oh God, to do whatever you want to. We surrender to you, oh God, to have your way in us, to do what you want to, Lord. Mm -hmm. All to thee. surrender all, I surrender all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you. We love you this morning. Hallelujah. We surrender to you, Lord. you, Lord, for your presence. Hallelujah. Shema Israel Good morning. Who's happy to be eating bread again? <laughs> Sorry for everyone that's gluten intolerant. Okay. My name is Masha. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I am a Jewish believer in Yeshua. I've been in Israel 10 years now. And I will be reading um, the parasha today. Okay. So we're starting with the Torah. Leviticus 10, 1 through 7. There is a common theme, so I'm not sure if this was from the Lord or just happened. I like to think it was from the Lord. Um, there is a common theme today in a lot of the passages I'll be reading, so I just want you to keep in mind. Um, the theme is, is holiness, um, I think, and we have a bit of a different sort of view on holiness throughout the um, different passages that I'll read, but just want you to to, to notice that, that uh, this theme of holiness. The death of Nadab and Abihu. So this is again Leviticus 10, 1 through 7. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord. Moses then said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke of when he said, among those who approach me, I will show myself holy in the sight of the people. I will be honored. Aaron remained silent. Moses summoned Mishael and Elzaphan, sons of Aaron's uncle Uziel, and said to them, come here Carry your cousins outside the camp, away from the front of the sanctuary. So they came and carried them, still in their tunics, outside the camp as Moses ordered. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons Eleazar and Itamar, Do not let your hair become unkempt, and do not tear your clothes, or you will die, and the Lord will be angry with the whole community. But your relatives, all the house of Israel, may mourn, for those the Lord has destroyed by fire. 
Do not leave the entrance to the tent of meeting or you will die because the Lord's anointing oil is, is on you. So they did as Moses said. Very severe consequences to being unholy. The next passage is from the Haftarah, 2 Samuel 6 through 18. David again brought together out of Israel chosen men, 30,000 in all. He and all his men set out from Baalah of Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim that are on the Ark. They set the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it in from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the Ark of God on it, and Ahio was walking in front of it. David and the whole house of Israel were celebrating with all of their might before the Lord, with songs and with harps, lyres, tambourines, sistrums, and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of this irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And to this day, that place is called Peretz Uzzah. So now I'm also going to read from the Brit Chadasha from the New Covenant, Covenant, because we are believers in Messiah. And this is from 1 Peter 1, 10 through 16. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of Messiah in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. This is, again, a kind of a showing us what it means to be holy. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given when Yeshua Mashiach is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. It's so great to have you with us today here at King of Kings Community, Hertalia. We have a few things we would like you to know this week. If this is your first time or you're visiting us today, we want to extend a special welcome. If you cool, please fill out this connect card that we have at the back at the welcome table and drop it in the basket so that someone from our team can reach out. Before Saturday service at 9 a.m., our prayer group meets downstairs in the Kingdom Kids room. This is where we pray for the needs of our community, our city, and our nation. You're invited to join. You're welcome to keep your infants and small children in the service. If they get a little fussy and need a break, we provide a small nursery downstairs past the Kingdom Kids room. This room has couches, a crib, toys, and a speaker so that you won't miss anything in the service. Junior high and youth groups will meet on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. here in this building. This is an amazing environment for these students to get to know God along with people their own age. Contact us at kkch.org or the WhatsApp family group if you are part for more details. We have been on break during the month of April, but we will be back next month. Community groups are the heartbeat of our congregation. 
These are more than Bible studies. These are times where we can grow in God together, as well as developing relationships with one another. The Herzliya City Center Group meets on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at Tolik and Masha's house. And the Herzliya Pitua Group meets on Monday at 7 p.m. at the Dancil's house, but will not be meeting this week. Contact us at kkch.org or the WhatsApp group if you're already a part for the address and directions. Ladies, you're invited to join our Women's Glow group meeting every Thursday morning from 10 to 12 here in this building. This is a group of ladies from all over the area and different congregations meeting to study God's word, pray, and fellowship with other women. We hope to see you this Thursday. Adopt a student. Many of the students that walk through our doors are completely on their own. Some of them for the very first time. As you know, a student's fears can come with many challenges such as loneliness and many different pressures. We believe that this idea of adopting a student will help the students feel like they are not alone and find support throughout the journey in Israel. If you consider adopting a student, you will be saying yes to the following. One, adopting the student for at least one semester, praying for them personally, inviting them over for dinner when it's possible, or delivering food to them. And four, checking in on them from time to time to see how they're doing. If you feel like this is something for you, please sign up in the back. On Israel Independence Day, Wednesday, April 26, we will be having a barbecue with games planned for the family. We will join from 12 to 3 at Golda Meir 19. If you plan to join us, we ask you to bring your own meat and a side dish to share. We look forward to spending the afternoon with you. Those are our announcements for this week. Thanks for listening. If you want to find out more, get in contact, watch our services online, or give online, you can always visit kkch.org. Please take a minute and greet a few people around you. We hope you have a wonderful Shabbat. Have you met everyone around you yet? <laughs> Lovely. Well, good morning, everyone. As Masha said, you're all happy to eat bread again. <laughs> Woo! -hoo. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matthew. Um, uh, I, if you haven't seen me or met me in the past couple of weeks, it's because I've been a little preoccupied. Uh, my wife was the one leading worship here today, and we just had a newborn about six weeks ago. So this is her first week here in the congregation again with us. Yeah. And uh, so we're, we're very excited. Uh, past, our pastor, Daniel, is still in Germany. For those of you who care, he is with <laughs> I joked with him that, uh, you know, my wife gave birth, so she was out of commission for a few weeks. But this year, I feel like Daniel's been gone more than she has. So, <laughs> No, I'm joking. But he, so he is taking a much-needed uh, retreat, a pastor's retreat with him and Jaylene and getting poured into because, you know, spiritual leaders do so much pouring out and pouring out and, and, and sowing into people's lives. Sometimes it's easy to neglect what they need and their spiritual needs. So they're get, taking the time uh, for a retreat to get poured into and ministered to. So they send their greetings. Uh, so as I stated, could you turn my mic down a little bit? Sorry, I'm booming. Can you hear me in the back? <laughs> Lovely. Um, as I stated... We have a new addition to our family, and Daniela was excited to talk about it, too. We've got lots of new babies here. Her name is Amalia, and she is truly an answer to our prayers. Sorry, let me correct that. She's an answer to my wife's prayers <laughs> and Alon's prayers. They were praying against me. That's <laughs> who the prayer was directed at. I did not want another child, and uh, I can be very, very stubborn. And actually, a couple years ago, it led to, let's call it a dispute between my wife and I, where she wanted another child, and I didn't want another child, and neither of us would budge. Dispute is the, the nice holy word that we use for fight. <laughs> so we had a little bit of a, a dispute in our home. And Someone counseled her. We, we actually, you know, sought advice for this. Like, we have this major disagreement in our family. And someone counseled both of us to actually just sit down separately and pray. 
And she said, okay, I'll pray. I don't know if it's going to do any good. And I said, I'll pray too. I don't know that the Lord's going to change my mind. We'll see. Well, God is God. <laughs> and he can do whatever he wants to. Amen? So he, he did, in fact, change my heart from not wanting a child to very much wanting a child. What's my point? There was a very real issue in my marriage, and I'm sure there's very issue, real issues in your marriages or in your families, in your relationships, or in your lives. But because we prayed, because of prayer as a re direct result of going to the Lord in prayer, now we have this beautiful human life and destiny and purpose in this child as a direct result of someone praying. So my wife, whenever she finds out that I'm preaching, she always asks me in such a tactful but, you know, a real way, can you preach on something that actually matters? <laughs> uh, no, she doesn't say it like that. That's how I interpret it. Uh, can you preach on something, and it's important, preach on something that we can use practically. Because I like to go into the history, and I like to go in the context, as you know, and the first century Greek and Aramaic and Hebrew and Shebrew and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think that stuff's very, very important. It does matter. Today we're going to be speaking on something very practical to me and I believe to you. And that subject is prayer. Now, when I talk about prayer, some of you and some people in the world may obviously not think that is very practical. Even some that are believers yeah, we pray, I get it. That's something that we do because we're religious. And you, you might not never ever say it out loud, but it's the way that we think. Some of you think that prayer, maybe not some of you, sometimes we think of prayer like throwing a wish or, or some hopeful thought, just throw it up into the sky and hope that some, someone gets it up there. You can believe in God in theory, but prayer for you can become more like a wish list, something I just spout out, things that I wish from God, and hopefully they're going to come true. Has anyone ever tried to start a disciplined prayer life? You saw someone that was really strong in prayer, and you start to, I want to have a disciplined prayer life. I want to get into it, man. You sit down to pray one day. You, you wake up early before the kids or before you're supposed to go to work, and you sit down to pray, and then, Father God, and as soon as you start praying, everything you were supposed to do that day, and everything that you remembered, and every stray thought just comes rushing into your head. Anyone had that experience ever? Father God, oh, you know what? I didn't check the news today. I got to check the news. I got to find out if I'm going to die from a rocket this morning. Okay. Father God, I wonder if there's anything new on my Instagram feed. Let me check that while I'm praying. Yeah. Okay. Father God, I am starving. Let me get me a snack. I can't pray on an empty stomach. <laughs> Father, you know what? I got to call Sherry about the project this week. What's the movie with that guy? I'm going to look him up. Oh, Lord, and bless my wife too. Amen. I got to go to work. Anyone have that experience where it just becomes so distracting? It can be difficult to pray. It's one of the most difficult things in the world. I see it here. I'm sure none with you, but I see it in the congregation sometimes when we do public prayer or someone gets up to pray. That's when everyone closes their eyes, right? And that's when everyone checks out. And then that's when you think no one's looking, so you can go get out your phone really quick and check your messages and check your feed. Uh, amen. I, I see it. <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> Some of you believe in prayer, but almost as an afterthought. Maybe you think that what I can do is more practical than just asking God for everything. What I can do is, I'll do my best, and then if I need, really need help, then I'll go to God. So if most of us, or if I examined my prayer life sometimes, we can, at least in practice, believe that prayer is just sending up a wish list to a big blob in the sky, God that's far away, maybe once or twice asking for something, and maybe once in a while, we hope to get an answer. If we could turn to Luke chapter 11... In the passage we're going to read today, Luke chapter 11, Yeshua is praying himself, by himself. And his followers, his disciples, noticed and have noticed something. There's something different about the way that Yeshua prays. There's something different about the way he does it. You know, in Jewish culture, and all the way up until today, we were talking before service, there is a directive of prayer. There are uh, three times a day, 
18 prayers that are done and to make sure that we are connecting with God three times a day, every day, with an Orthodox Jewish person. You can see them on the bus or in public transportation. It doesn't matter what time it is. With the Sidorim, they're reading uh, the prayer. And so it was very much a part of culture back in the first century. Back to the first century. Back in the first century is very much part of the culture for these people to pray. But the disciples saw in Yeshua something radically different. When I'm praying, I'm bored. I'm falling asleep, Peter's saying. But when Yeshua's praying, he's going to go off by himself on a mountain, and he's going to come back walking on water. He's going to come back with power blazing. When, when he's blessing the food, some of you just bless the food so you can hurry up and eat. When Yeshua's blessing the food, it multiplies into a million pieces of bread and, and fish. Or he'd pray, and there'd be thunders and voices from heaven. Or he'd become really shiny and transfigure into something. His clothes would become white. He didn't need to do laundry anymore because his clothes were just white and shiny. When he prayed, pup, uh, when he prayed the impossible would happen. So the disciples looking at their own prayer life folk, and, and, and focusing on Yeshua's prayer, they, when he got up, he said, you know, you pray with such intensity and focus and power. Can you teach us how to do that? Can you teach us how to pray? And that's what we're going to be learning about today. Go to that first slide. Teach us how to pray. We want the master to teach us how to pray. Not how to calm storms. They didn't ask him to teach him how to turn water into wine. Some of you. Uh, so <laughs> he was teaching them how to pray. Rabbi, teach us how to pray like John did. Let's read. One day... Yeshua was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive our sins, as we, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. So many of you are familiar with this prayer. It's called the... Lord's Prayer, God, Yeshua's Prayer. Uh, you, you might know it in a different version. He taught this prayer on multiple occasions and different times. And some of us are so familiar with the prayer that it's kind of lost all meaning and its power. We kind of just recite it after a while. But this is how Yeshua taught his disciples to pray. And there was something radically simple and radically different about how they were used to praying. This is his pattern. So my first point today is pattern. We're going to look at the pattern of what Yeshua taught. And he begins this pattern with the word, Father. The key to Yeshua's power in prayer he has a relationship and prays to the one who he calls Father. I've heard this theological reasoning, if you look in, in theology. You know, the reason that Yeshua did all these miracles and all his prayers were answered, he did them to prove that he was the Son of God. He had to do that to prove that he was the Son of God. That's why God always answered his prayers, because he was the Son of God. Let me ask you something about your own prayer life. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Yeshua brings us into sonship. He puts us into relationship with the Father. We communicate with God in the same status as a son to a father. Businessmen, some of you have business or, or have had businesses before. And you may have some kind of wealth or, or some capital to invest in. If you're going along and someone, a stranger comes up to you and says, I've got this great idea. You know, does the elevator pitch? I've got this great idea for a business investment. And you may listen to it. You may kind of like take his card. Okay, thanks. And you might consider it. There's, there's a good chance. So can I have $10,000 capital? Well, I, I got to think it over. I, I'm not sure. But if your son... Or your daughter who has grown up knowing business and has you know them and have relationship comes to you and says, Dad, I, I have this really, I don't know. I, I've got this business venture that I'm really thinking of. You think you could give me some advice and help me with it? Who are you more, depending on who your son is, who are you more likely to support with capital for that business venture? A stranger or a son? 
Who are you more likely to give your resources to in help, a stranger or a son? You must be in a relationship with the Father, and you must pray with the kind of faith that you have in that kind of relationship. We must come to him this way. God's not a blob in the sky. He's not some cloud that you are throwing up a wishing well to. He is Abba, Father. It's intimate. Some of you may have had difficult relationships with your father, and maybe you have a difficult time because you want to superimpose that relationship with, with, that you've had with your father onto the heavenly father. We want to break that. We want to pray that that's broken off of you and that you see the love of God. Our key phrase I want to look at, this pattern of prayer begins by relating to the paternal. The pattern of prayer begins by relating to the paternal. This whole pattern that Yeshua lays down, our Father in heaven, this is activated by a relationship between the Father and the Son that Yeshua has and the Father-Son relationship that we should have. And if you're not in that relationship with the Father today, I invite you to seek God. I invite you to come into that. This is a free gift of adoption into that father-son relationship with God of the universe that you're invited to. So it starts with the father. The pattern continues, and we'll look qu quickly at these points. Secondly, he prays that his name be hallowed be your name. Your name be made holy. What does that mean? That others would see God because he is holy. It doesn't matter if we pray for it or not. He is that. But that in our lives, he, others may see him as holy. That he might be a special place in our life. And with our life, we would honor him. Your kingdom come. This is not just a, pray, a prayer for sometime far in the future. Ah, maybe, maybe your kingdom is going to come someday. No, this is a prayer that the rulership of God would break through in every part of our life in our world today. That we, that God would reign in this community, in our lives. We pray that revival would come and that people would be awakened to God, that evidence of his presence and power would be in our lives. We can pray for our government and we can pray for our rulers in our nation. And yes, that the king would return quickly. That's what this kingdom come part of the prayer means. Next, he says, give us this day our daily bread. Not give me, give us. Pray for your own needs and the needs of those around you. Be specific. Don't be ashamed to lay these needs before the Father. Next, he says, forgive our sins. Well, Yeshua didn't have any sins, so this isn't the Lord's prayer. It's our prayer. Forgive our sins. We pray that God would get our hearts right with him, that he would cleanse us. We, if we have sin in our life, we confess those sins to him. We should be open and ready to forgive any resentments you might have against others. Pray for your enemies and bless your enemies. And the last part, he says, lead us not into temptation. We ask for the Father to help keep our heart pure. Lead us away from the things that tempt us. We're all going to be tested. We're all going to be tempted at some times. But we have permission to ask the Father to keep us from that temptation as much as possible. Yeshua's prayers are powerful. It starts with that paternal. It starts with that relationship with the Father. And this is how he taught us to pray. That's the pattern he gives on the foundation of the relationship to the Father. Let's keep reading. Let's look at Luke 11, starting in verse 5. If someone could give me a lukewarm glass of water, I'd appreciate it. Then Yeshua said to them, Suppose you had a friend and you go out to him at midday, midnight, and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't give up, get up to give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not give up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Thank you. Ask and it will be given to you. See, I asked and it was given to me. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds and the one who knocks the door 
will be opened. Amen. Excuse me. <clears throat> now, after Yeshua gives a pattern, Yeshua teaches persistence in prayer. Ask, seek, knock, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Why? Can't God just do it the first time? Can't I just ask once? Sometimes we don't know. We don't know why we have to keep asking over and over because he told us to. Sometimes in the Bible, the devil is actually, the enemy is actually holding something back. Sometimes it's something about building your own maturity and your own patience. God's weight does not mean God won't. I'll say that again. God's weight does not mean that God won't. Patience and perseverance doesn't mean, well, I'm going to ask God this one thing, and if he doesn't give it to me, then if he, maybe he's too busy. I don't really need it anyway. I don't really expect an answer. That's not what patience and perseverance is. People that really know God's character are patient and persevere in prayer because they know he will answer them. Well, I don't want to ask God for things that I need. I, I, I just don't want to bother him. It seems so small, so trivial. If you don't ask, you won't receive. He wants you to ask. He wants to give you. It doesn't mean he's going to give you every little thing that you ask. He's not going to. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll give you that portion if you ask for it. But that's not what the, word, the principle is saying here. It's not saying that he's going to necessarily give you everything that you may not need or may not be good for you, but he will give you everything, of his, uh, everything that you need. He wants to give. If you do not ask, then you misunderstand the character of the Father. Bar Kokhva, who was a, a Jewish uh, revolutionary in the early hundreds after, um, after Yeshua, and some people thought that this warrior was the Messiah. This, forget about Yeshua. This guy, <laughs> this guy knows how to fight. He, he has got some gall and can beat up the Romans. And he gave this famous prayer, and he says, before going into war, he would say, O master of the universe, there's no need for you to assist us against our enemies, but do not embarrass us either. <laughs> kind of a prayer is that. Don't help us, but if you could, please don't embarrass us either. Well, he was embarrassed, and, and the revolt failed. Uh, so not, not the best Messiah that they've been given. It's not just praying one and done. Give your, your wish to the wishing well and moving on. The Bible says to keep bringing your request before the Father. You would understand this if you've lived in Israel long about the need to keep persisting. Right, Miss Diane? The need, the need to keep pressing on to the bureaucracy. I was at, uh, I was at the Mishkad Hapanim a few weeks ago, the Ministry of Interior, because my daughter was born here. And I had to go get her birth certificate in order to get all the American paperwork started. So I, I was the first in line. I'm always the first in line. I'm always the first in line. I never like to be the second in line. I was the first in line. I get to the counter. I get to the woman, hand her all my paperwork. I said, I need a birth certificate for my daughter. She was born in this hospital in Israel. What is this? I've never seen this before. I, I have no idea. You're in the wrong building. You're on the wrong floor. I've never even heard of birth certificate. Always, this is impossible. This is impossible. Has anyone ever heard that in any kind of office? This is impossible. Let me see your paperwork. Walks away to someone else, comes back, says, okay, that guy over there will give you your birth certificate. I think it's just the standard answer. First, everything's impossible. Then if you ask a couple more times, okay, fine, it's not impossible. Here you go. That's the kind of audacity that we need to have as believers. We just keep, I think Israel helps our faith a little bit. You just kind of, you just kind of keep pressing until that wall knocks down. In those days, back in Yeshua's days, everyone would sleep in a big room. Wouldn't that be fun? Everyone sleeps in a big room on the floor. If someone knocked on the door, hey, it's midnight, I need some, I need some bread. As a father, You'd have to step over all the kids, or on, step on a hand. Any of you trying to get your kids to bed understand how annoying this is. Find some bread in the dark, get the bread, step over all of them, unlock, cocoon, unlock the door, give them bread, cocoon, lock the door again, and step. 
you know how annoying that is? It's, it's not just like, I'm getting up to get you bread, here you go. It's a process. If someone comes to me and says, man, I've got a flight to Ben Gurion Airport in the morning at 3 a.m. I have to be there at 3 a.m. My first response is usually, that's too bad. Enjoy your trip. <laughs> but if they specifically ask me, not roundabout way, they say, can you take me to the airport at 3 a.m.? Please don't test this, by the way. If you, can you take me to the airport at 3 a.m.? I, I will usually very truthfully say, oh, yeah, just be ready at 2.30. I don't want to, but usually because I'm a nice person, or at least I want you to think I'm a nice person, I will do it. And some of you are probably that same way. You want to be seen as a nice person, even if it's something that's inconvenient for you. If it's in your power, you will do it. How much more will God the Father answer us, answer us and we, when we are audacious in our prayer? I often think that when we don't get an answer from God, we think, oh, well, it must not be God's will. We've developed this entire theology of why God does not answer prayer. Yeshua didn't teach very often on what God won't answer. He did preach on what he will answer and that he will answer. He didn't very much preach on why the Father wants us to give up in prayer. He preached more and more on why we must persist in prayer. He didn't say, when the Son of Man returns, will he find reasonable expectations on the earth? He said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Keep asking. Have audacious faith. I understand that there's disappointments. I understand that some of you and me personally have had times where prayer has gone un. We haven't seen the answer that we were looking for. And we're disappointed. That might be a sermon for another time. But we, pray, we don't develop... Uh, how should we say that? We don't develop theology based on our experience. We let our theology define our experience. Don't let your experience define your faith. Let your faith define your experience. I pray that God heals our heart when we've had disappointments. The Holy Spirit heals and builds that faith again that we are believing God in the now. That even when we didn't, didn't see those answers, God's going to heal that disappointment in our heart and build that faith that we can trust him more and more. Recently, there was a, a time where uh, three or four people in one day came to me or mentioned that they had back pain. And I prayed for every single one of them. And none of them were healed. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm mad. I, and I, I literally became audacious. I said, okay, I'm going to pray again. Pray, pray, pray. No one got healed. The next day, pray, pray, pray. No one got healed. And one of them, finally, I was like, come on. Pray that that back pain goes away. And finally, one person came to me and said, hey, the back pain's like 90% gone now. I was like, well, that's a start. <laughs> At least we got something here. Sometimes Yeshua had to pray twice for someone. There was a process in that prayer. For He prayed for a blind man once, and he's, I said, can you see? Well, I see men like trees around. Okay, we're going to pray. If Yeshua had to pray twice for someone, how much more that we might have to be audacious and pray a couple times? 100% Is it 100% healed? Oh, praise God. <laughs> Masha was one of them that I was praying for. So just in case you didn't know. <laughs> Let's keep reading. Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 11, where we picked off. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So after he teaches the pattern and then persistence, Yeshua guarantees provision. God, let me see, let me see your hands if you're a father, if you're, you're a dad, daddies. God is a better father than you are. I'm sorry to disappoint you if you thought that you were the best. If your mug says number one dad, <laughs> your mug's wrong. God is a better father than you are. God is a better father than your father was to you. Think of the bare minimum that you'll do for your children. When my baby is screaming and crying, 
my newborn, as a father, I run over to her immediately. Ah! I give her exactly what she wants to her mother. <laughs> I know what she wants. <laughs> she doesn't use your words yet, that, and that's okay. Some of you might be at that spiritual maturity where your prayer might just be to spend time with God and cry out to him and you don't exactly know what you need or know how to pray. You might just have to pray the Lord's prayer out loud. You don't realize you know what you need yet. You don't know enough to ask for it. But your father knows and that's okay. That's the level of your relationship with the father. But my son, who's seven years old, if he comes up to me and points to the fridge and says... Very likely, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not running to him. Not, you can use your words, buddy. You have to be a little bit more specific depending on your maturity level with your father. If there was a, a situation where I got into a huge financial trouble and I was down to my last resort and I had to call my dad to borrow money, and if I had to call him on the phone and said, Dad, He may know that I'm in need, but he'll probably think I'm in need of a psychologist or a therapist. As a mature child of God, the Father will make you become more specific and targeted in your prayer. He will challenge your faith more and more, even though he knows what you already need. Why, why do you have to be specific? Why does he challenge you to do that? Because you're growing in relationship with a father. You're not a baby anymore. He's teaching you how to speak. My relationship with my older son is different than my relationship with my newborn, and it's different between me and my dad, even if the love is the same. The difference is that eventually we want our sons and daughters to be independent and to live their own lives and be independent for us, but God the Father is always going to be the source for us. He is always going to be given, giving. I think many of us sometimes fail to grasp God as Father and His deep, deep love and generosity towards us. And I think even fewer grasp the worth of this ultimate gift that Yeshua promises to give us, His Holy Spirit. Father not only answers our prayers, not only gives us our needs and forgives our sins and everything we ask, at the end of Yeshua's teaching on prayer, He says, you give your kids fish, whoop de doo The Father gives his spirit. That's why I want to look at the second key phrase today. The best gift that the Father gives is the Holy Spirit. Do you know that? Sometimes it's hard to wrap your head around that. I'd rather get the Porsche. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is the gift that God gives that is most precious, it is from his own essence, his own self, the most inmost part of his being. He reserves nothing from us. It's like when Yeshua di died and shed his own blood, the inward part of himself was being poured out for you. And God the Father, the most inward part of his being, his very spirit, his Holy Spirit, is being poured out on us. Do you realize how precious that gift is? Romans 8 says, it's the spirit that sets us free from sin and death. The spirit is the one that actually makes us sons, the ability to call him Abba Father. The Spirit is the one that gives us the resources of heaven and hands it to us. It says he makes us heirs, inheritors. Galatians 4 says, When the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born from a woman, under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. Where am I at? Redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are sons, then God sent the Spirit of the Son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, he has made you his heir. That means you have the resources of the Father. You own them. You're not borrowing them. You own it if you have the spirit. If we are sons, God gives us his spirit when we ask. He will give us a greater measure of his spirit when we ask. We're going to finish. David, could you come up and play for me, with me? 
He will make us so that we are more open to the spirit that we ask. This, this is the prayer, and I love this prayer, because this is the prayer that the fathers always, you might doubt, oh, we'll see if God can provide what I need for next month financially. Well, I don't know if God's going to make a way in my visa. We shouldn't doubt those things. We should continue to be audacious and persevere in those things. But the one thing that Yeshua is 100% sure that he's going to provide, the prayer he will always answer is the prayer for his spirit. Some people are worried, well, we, let's be careful about those Holy Spirit folks. Let's be careful about inviting too much of the Holy Spirit in because people get wacky and crazy and we, I don't want to be like that. Listen, we, yes, we want to be attentive. We want to be smart and do things in order and um, test every spirit. And that's biblical. But we don't have to worry. There's, can we trust God more than we trust the devil to get into the sea? Can we trust what God's doing? When we ask for his Holy Spirit, can we trust that he's not going to give us a scorpion instead? Can we trust that he's not going to give us a snake, but he's given us the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions? Some of us don't understand who the Holy Spirit is. It's not this, like, it is mystical in the sense of the word, but it's not this mystical cloud. Ooh, it's creepy. Some people say Holy Ghost. Ooh, it's a Holy Ghost. It's not this creepy thing. It is God himself coming and living within us and coming and, and, and overseeing this community. There's many Old Testament examples that, that we can give. One of my favorite is when um, there, there was 70 elders in the Old Testament that, were, uh, that came to, to see God on the Mount Sinai and, and came, came to kind of look onto God. And it said that his spirit, his wind, descended on all 70 of them. But there were two that didn't make it to the meeting. So 68 were there. Two didn't make it to the meeting that day. They, I don't know, they were sick or something. And they were with the normal people, the normal Israelis. And when God took his spirit that was on Moses to, to speak and to rule and put it on the, the 68, he also went and took it on these two over here that didn't make it to the party. And it said that they were prophesying and, and they were singing and, and they were speaking the words of God. And someone said, hey, those two are prophesying and they're not with you. They didn't make it to the meeting. They don't have the right. God answered, I got to find it because I got to word it the right way. And God made a statement, and I love this statement. Yeah, Moses said, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's pro- uh, people were prophets, and the Lord's spirit, uh, the, uh, sorry, Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on all of them. That's God's desire for all his people, all of his sons, all of his children, all of his sons and daughters to have his Holy Spirit. Why don't we stand? The best gift that the Father gives us is Holy Spirit is the prayer that he's always answering. We can't pray without the Father. And I say we shouldn't pray without the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you in your, in, in your son's name, who poured out his blood to make us sons and daughters, that gave from himself the inmost part of his being, his very blood poured out for us so that we can be made sons and daughters. I pray, God, with audacity and boldness, but yet humility, I pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on this community. I pray that you pour out your spirit on all of us. You did it in times past where you took your spirit and and, and you put it on ones and twos and, and on 68 and two. But your desire is that your spirit would rest on all your people. That the nations would see the glory of God in your people. Father, I pray for individuals here. And I encourage you just to pray to yourself. If this is for you, I want you to ask God. I I want you to make this personal. Ask the Father. Lord, I pray for individuals in this building today or in our community that are needing 
to either be opened up to your Holy Spirit or needing to receive this Holy Spirit. I pray right now this prayer that you will always answer, that you would pour out your spirit on your children, that you would give this ultimate, most powerful gift to your children right now. Anyone that's praying in their hearts and asking for more of the Holy Spirit, for more of the Holy Spirit's operation in their life, I pray that you would answer this prayer now, Lord. We have faith. There's no doubt in our minds that the words that Yeshua says are anything but true. We pray that you pour out your spirit today. Pray that you pour out your spirit on our children. Lord, that, your, that our children would, would prophesy, Lord. Our, our young men, our young women would prophesy, God. Our old men would dream dreams, Father. That the glory of God would come back to the house of Israel and come back to the children that you've called from the nations. Let your Holy Spirit break out on us. Just give him a moment. We surrender, Lord. We surrender. We open ourselves to you. We say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Visit us. Visit us in demonstrations of power. Visit us in demonstrations of, of signs and wonders. Demonstrate, uh, visit us with a demonstration of your word accompanied by power. Demonstrate your mercy to us in bringing those who are far off into your, into your care, Lord. Adopting new sons and daughters. Bringing those who are lost to you, God. We pray for those who need a miracle in this place today. We pray for those, Lord, I was told before service that someone is, is, is dealing with a very fast rate leukemia. We pray, for the, we pray for Chris in the name of Yeshua. We pray for healing in his body, Lord, that we can come back with a testimony that you are the God that heals. Thank you, Father. We pray for those who are asking for, for a, a, a child and that are believing God for a child. Lord, that, that maybe their, their womb has been closed for some time. Lord, we pray like Hannah, audacious, audacious before the Lord. Not caring what anyone else thinks we look like. We pray that that child would come forth in the name of Yeshua. Those who are in financial straits, God, we pray for provision. We believe for provision right now. That's the smallest thing that you can do, Lord. That's the easiest thing for you. Is anything too hard for God? Pour out your spirit on this community, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit of God be more real to us, more of a priority to us than anything else that we do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so good to us. Can we just sing that? You're a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. Hallelujah. We acknowledge you, Father, and we ask you, Lord, that you continue to pour out your spirit and make us open to your spirit being poured out. Prepare us, Lord, as Paul prayed, that you would send your spirit to strengthen us in our inner man, that the Messiah might dwell in us by faith more fully. We pray for that for this congregation. We acknowledge you as Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen. You believe that today? Hope you do. Bless you. In the name of the Lord, may his face shine on you.
give you his peace, his shalom this week. Shem Yeshua. Amen. I invite you to stick around for a couple minutes, especially if uh, we haven't met you yet or if we, you're new with us today, we'd love to get a chance to meet you. I ask you to keep all the chairs where they belong. I know some of you are super helpful every week by stacking the chairs, and it is very helpful, but we're not going to tear down today because we're going to leave it for next week. So you don't have to stack chairs. Just leave them as they are. Kol Thank you all. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Have a great week.